Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. In a blow to jobs and South Africa's industrial capacity, OsloMetal South Africa has announced that it will be winding down its long products business. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the reasons and the implications. Hi Terence. Hi oh, Chanel. The closure of portions of the longs business has been mooted before, but it looks set to happen this time. Yes, over many years, uh, different CEOs at OsloMetal have had what they call footprint reviews, particularly of the Newcastle works. The most recent being, I think, 2019 and then again in 2021. But there's always been a view that maybe some cost cutting can be implemented. And there was a bit of a holdout, I think, as well for market recovery. Uh, both of which I think, I think on the cost cutting, I think they've almost reached the end of what is possible. And on the market recovery, we know that that's been very tough in South Africa with this protracted uh, downturn, really, or protracted low growth that we've had for now more than a decade. So I think, yes, this time, as you say, I think it looks very real. What are some of the reasons given for the move? So there's multiple reasons uh, given. I mean, we all know as South Africans, and we all have sympathy with the power crisis and uh, also the rising electricity costs. And a lot of these big uh, energy intensive assets that we have in South Africa, not just ArcelorMittal, are already built around low cost electricity, which we know is no longer a feature of the South African economy. On top of that, we have the unreliable electricity supply, which for the long products business, but generally the Funderbell Works, which is the flat products business, comes in the form of load curtailment. We get load shedding. What energy intensive businesses get is a, is a message from Eskom is that you have to reduce your load by a certain percentage. As we ramp up in parallel in stages of load shedding, they get ramped up in parallel with uh, curtailment. And there's been, a lot, there's been a lot more curtailment incidents over the last two years, as we know with the amount of load shedding we've seen at very high stages. So there'll be sympathy there. Likewise, but less visible, is the transnet collapse. And that's really affected Newcastle. It's an isolated uh, geographically. So it's really built not close to an iron ore mine, but close to, well, a railway network that was going to bring that iron ore and the coking coal in, uh, or the coal in. And that, we know, has really been difficult. And more and more uh, businesses like Arcelomita are having to rely on road transport. So that, uh, and I think at one at some stages, furnaces have been shut because there just hasn't been material, or, uh, material available. So again, sympathy there. Uh, but then on the other side, there's a government policy really to try and bring some competition into the long products business. So there'll be less sympathy, I suppose, because Arsenal is such a dominant player, and uh, such. A, and I think in some ways there's been a feeling that it's been a bully in the market. And there is a desire for more competition, but the policy has really been around the scrap policy. Uh, and that's made it very attractive for other competitors that are based on electric art furnaces that come in quite a lot lower cost now than an integrated mill like Newcastle. So that policy has shaken the long product sustainability or its competitiveness. And then the, the final thing, as I mentioned right in the beginning, is just this long protracted uh, low growth in South African economy, which has been particularly acute in these infrastructure markets that the long products uh, need to need in order to really have the base load, the sort of the commodity products, the rebar, you know, getting that into the infrastructure that really has just been, the brakes have been on and for far too long. And we know what it's done to the construction industry, it's decimated the construction industry. And now we can see that that fundamental oversupply, you know, because of the policy that is supporting the scrap-based producers, and then just no, uh, you know, relief from the demand side. So they've, it's a sort of perfect storm. The town of Newcastle will feel the pain most acutely. Yes, this is a very problematic for a town like Newcastle, which this is really the main economic actor in, a, in, a, in that town. It's been a mainstay of that economy for many, many years. It won't close entirely because the coke and coal aspects of the business that continues to produce market coke and coke and coal for its own use, possibly to be diverted at to Funderbell Park as well. But this is devastating. If you look at the 3,500 jobs that are at risk, and I think this time, uh, Ostermitt are saying almost these 
retrenchments are inevitable and they're engaging now with their unions, but uh, more than 2,000 of those are in Newcastle, both full-time employees as well as contractor jobs. So you can imagine just that loss of salary to those people, but also lots of businesses um, are linked. You can imagine from gardening services to catering to supplying of stationery, that probably keeps a lot of businesses sticking over in that. So it's really devastating for Newcastle. And this time around, I don't, I don't see that there's going to be much chance of anything, any relief. In the past, government intervention has been able to prevent closures. Is there a possibility of intervention this time? When I went through the rationale, you can see it's multiple areas. So in the past, it was very much about can we protect this business? Can we bring it some import protection? Can we have more like agreements around local content and infrastructure? Now, local content and infrastructure only comes through if the infrastructure is actually being built. And as I mentioned earlier, that's been a big problem and it hasn't come through. And there's more competitive product from the general the general product, the, the rebar type product from the EAF uh, competitors. And then the protection's not going to do much you know, in a context where there's so much potential over capacity domestic. I think there's a, a less than 2 million tonnes consumed in, the, in lungs at the moment and probably capacity for double that. So it's, it's a fundamental, I think, uh, market structural problem that can't, there's no single bullet that government can say, okay, we'll give you protection of more 10% as they've done in the past, and that's going to save it. Now, as we know, Saldana, it was a big shock when they closed Saldana. So that set the template, I think. You know, we, once we get to an unsustainable position, Arsenal Metal is going to put these plants on, into mothballs. What does it mean for the downstream fabricators as well as for South Africa's industrial capacity and beneficiation ambitions? Yeah, on the beneficiation front, it's really quite a blow to South Africa because, you know, we keep talking the beneficiation game and we see, keep seeing that being eroded. We've seen it in the ferrochrome uh, industry over many years and also, I suppose, now we're seeing it in other uh, metals. But this is, you know, this is a plant like a Newcastle that also affects Ferenikin and then downstream of Newcastle, Imala uh, which is where they make the rail, the rail components. And that was really a restart of Haifelt, which is already closed, which, is, which was another erosion of benefi beneficiation and industrial capacity. So on those two fronts, it's a massive blow for South Africa. Obviously, the immediate impacts the people and uh, the staff that are going to be lost. But for South Africa's industrial capability and its beneficiation ambitions, this is not, not, a, well, not a good development at all. Uh, for the downstream industry, again, it depends. I think, um, as we say, on the whole, there's enough product for the general, uh, the general long products that come out. But uh, Oslometa over the years has developed a lot of niche capabilities that provide specific uh, industries, mine, mining related uh, component suppliers, automotive related commodity suppliers. And that material is going to take some time, I think, to find substitutes for. And we see CIFSA has put that out as a major. There's not, you can't just switch on suddenly a new substitute supplier overnight. And we know with the port congestion that's happening at, uh, across South Africa, but particularly acute on this key channel from Durban into Gauteng, where the Durban uh, Pier 2 is really congested, and we've had ships standing outside beyond two weeks at Anchorage. You know, to find substitutes immediately is going to be very difficult, and I think Arsenal Metal is aware of that, and they say we'll try and align their wind down to the six month sort of profiles, buying profiles of those niche, particularly those niche products. But it's, it could be very dis dislocating for a number of downstream fabricators. And we just have to hope it doesn't tip some of these over as well. I suppose eventually uh, they will find substitutes, import substitutes. But in the immediate six months period, it's, it's quite uh, dislocating and very disruptive. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also. Don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.